Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. One man dead and another seriously injured. What San Antonio police are saying about a deadly overnight shooting. Investigations now happening after that, after that mid-air crash at a Dallas air show just coming into our newsroom. We now know that six people have died in that crash. Hear from the people who saw the planes collide. Taking a look outside through live cam. It is 40 degrees San Antonio. We'll be checking in with Mike later on in the show. Good morning, San Antonio. It's 8 o'clock on Sunday, November 13th, and I am here with Sarah. It's such a pleasure to be here this morning. Such an honor to have you, Jonathan, here with us this morning. Max Massey has been off this weekend, and you were took part of a very amazing event yesterday. Tell That's us about right. that. That's right. Yes, it was such a pleasure uh, and truly an honor to be uh, MC for the American Heart Association, Texas. They had their heart stroke walk yesterday morning. You can see the turnout there on your screen. It was just so incredible to see everyone out participating for a good cause. And it looked cold out there. People bundled up. There you are. <laughs> you know, that's Daniel. And we had the opportunity to hear his personal testimony yesterday morning. And I have to say, Sarah, it was a heartfelt testimony. Mm. He is a survivor. So you can already imagine the words he shared with everyone in attendance. Well, it looked like a successful event. And I'm so proud of you emceeing Thank that you. event. Thank you. And Mike, it like you can see people wrapped in blankets mm -hmm. out there yesterday, pretty much the same deal today. Oh yeah, yeah, cold yesterday morning and even colder this morning. Had a lot of uh, first freezes in parts of the hill country this morning. As a matter of fact, in some areas it is still freezing. Right now we're at 41 degrees, got a couple of high wispy clouds hanging around here. And look at that bottom number, dew points at 25, which means the air is just bone dry out there. It is a wonderful morning and we're not gonna get that hot today. Just 61 for a high temperature later on this afternoon, which is 10 degrees below normal. The aquifer in yesterday's reading went up four tenths of a foot and the allergens, a lot of mold, that uh, rain that we had on Friday, pigweed and juniper are both on the low side. All right, check out some of these temperatures up there in the hill country. Still at freezing in Kerrville, 29 at both Bandera as well as Comfort, 39 in Helotus and right at freezing up the road in Bulverde. And there's a hint of a wind chill in spots. So it feels like 38 here in town, just a puff of a breeze out there. Not much, but when you have this cold temperatures, it obviously doesn't take much as far as the uh, the wind to get that little extra bite to some of these these readings out there. Still have the freeze uh, warning in effect for the hill country and then going up I-35 and that's through the rest of the morning. As far as the rest of today, again, 55 at noon, 61 for high temperature. Like I said, 10 degrees below normal. Clouds going to be increasing as we go into the overnight hours and especially tomorrow morning. Probably going to be starting off with some rain around the area for your morning commute tomorrow. Plus, it stays on the cold side all week long. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Mike. Well, this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after a drive-by shooting at a home on the city's northeast side. SAPD say a vehicle drove up to a home on Castle Guard Drive before someone inside opened fire. Now, the two men were hit and one died at the scene. The other man was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. Witnesses did not get a good description of the vehicle and police are still investigating. A man is in the hospital this morning after being shot multiple times in the city's south side. It happened around 224 this morning along Rayburn Drive. Now, witnesses in a nearby apartment heard the shots and called police. The victim was taken to Bamsey in serious condition. Police aren't saying anything about a potential suspect at this time. One man is dead after, uh, this morning after being shot during a confrontation. That's according to San Antonio police. A suspected home intruder was shot during an argument with a homeowner last night on Hazel Street near Frio City Road and South Brazo Street. The homeowner told police when he went to his back door, he found the alleged intruder. The homeowner then fired two gunshots, hitting the suspect in the chest. Now, police performed CPR but were unsuccessful. The suspect died at the scene. We now know the name of the two people killed in a crash on the access road of Loop 410 from back on Thursday morning. Their 17-year-old Benito Vasquez and 20-year-old Jasmine Tobias. This is according to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. The crash happened on Loop 410 near Highway 151 on the city's west side. San Antonio police say Vasquez was allegedly speeding, took a curve too fast, which caused his car to hit the concrete base of a traffic light. The vehicle then caught fire. Tobias, the passenger, was extracted by police 
but also died at the scene. Vasquez was taken to univer University Hospital where he later died. And now to that devastating air crash at an air show in Dallas. We've just learned that six people were killed in that crash. Two historic planes colliding in the air as thousands of horrified spectators watched from the ground. ABC's Mireya Villarreal has the latest from Dallas. This morning, new details of the harrowing mid-air crash at a Dallas air show after two planes collided, falling from the sky, landing on Highway 67 and bursting into flames. We had air collision down on the airport. 660, there is uh, also some uh, down on the service road of 67 southbound. The FAA and NTSB now investigating what went wrong at the Wings Over Dallas event, a show featuring featuring commemorative Air Force planes. Spectators at the airport and nearby capturing the crash between the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress and a Bell P-63 King Cobra. Still no information yet released on those on board and if anyone survived. The B-17 normally has a crew of four to five. But that was what was on the aircraft and the P-63 is a single piloted fighter type aircraft. This is the seventh year this event has been held in Dallas without any issues until now. Hank Coates is the CEO of the Commemorative Air Force. This is a World War II flight demonstration type air show where we highlight uh, the aircraft and their capabilities and, and what actually happened in World War II. It's very patriotic. Uh, the maneuvers that they were going through were not dynamic at all. It was what we call bombers on parade. Organizers estimate between four and 6,000 people were around when the collision occurred, but say no bystanders were injured. What struck me was how strange it was that the pilot of the fighter dove in a way that uh, that indicated he didn't think anybody else was around. The NTSB has an awful lot of questions. Why did the pilots of these various airplanes not know where each other were? Who was in the wrong place? Well, just unfortunate situation there for everybody involved. I yeah. know. Time 807, temperature 40 degrees. Okay, a baby gorilla joining the zoo in Dallas. What makes this little guy so special? And next, a look at San Antonio Veterans Day Parade, what people thought and why they say they were proud to attend. 40 degrees at 807 this morning. If you want to get outside and enjoy the morning, you're going to want to bundle up, cover the kiddo's ears, a big jacket, and hey, this cold weather, it's going to stick around. Mike will have that forecast when we come back. The chilly weather didn't stop the Veterans Day celebrations in San Antonio yesterday. Thousands gathered in downtown for the 21st annual United States Military Veterans Parade. People from not only San Antonio, but from across the country came to Military City USA to honor those who have served our country. Different organizations, veteran groups and schools participated. It makes me feel very proud, um, very proud that the city is honoring all our veterans because if it's not for them, we wouldn't be under freedom and under that flag and protecting us every day. After a two-year hiatus, uh, I, I just believe that everybody needs to come uh, downtown San Antonio and uh, spread a little cheer for our veterans. And that hiatus was due to COVID the last time this event was held in 2019. Um, and. You know, also, thank you, Jonathan, our, say, our local veteran, veteran right here. here at KSAT. Thank you so much for oh, your service. Thank you for that. Yeah. Here's a hint. <laughs> Maybe. Eight How many years? years? Away. <laughs> eight years. Eight yeah. years? Okay. Served eight years. Yes, sir. Stationed yeah. on board the Lincoln, was USS it? Theodore Roosevelt. The Roosevelt, okay. It was in Norfolk, Virginia. Now it's in San Diego, of course. After I serve, it goes to the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank yeah. you so mm -hmm. much, Jonathan. All right, talk about the cool weather yesterday and then last evening out there at the Alamo Quarry. Stephanie Cerna and I were out there, and there's her beautiful daughter, Rooney. And we were welcoming Santa Claus, lighting all the lights out there, and it was to benefit uh, family services. So, folks, and you can still donate to family services all the way through December 24th. There was a bunch of people out there, perfect weather for it, just enough of a... Christmas spirit weather. Chilled in the air, <laughs> yes. And Santa Claus kind of sort of made it snow out there as well. 
So it was a lot of fun. Folks had a great time out there. So thank you all very much for attending that. And we've got a couple of high wispy clouds out there right now, but otherwise a gorgeous morning. Make sure you do bundle up though. Still have a freeze warning in effect for parts of the hill country and then going up the I-35 corridor does not include Bear County. 29 still in comfort. 31 now Bandera just below freezing right after freezing up obviously up there in Kerrville. Same thing at Balverde 41 out there at the airport and Seguin has dropped down to uh, 34 degrees. We did hit 38 on the hourly readings. The official low temperature so far this morning. Little bit of a wind chill in a couple of spots. Rio Medina feels like 37 Randolph 37 as well as in uh, New Braunfels. Not much of a breeze out there and that's the reason why we got so cold because we had clear skies overnight. No blanket on top of us. Very dry air doesn't hold the heat in and then light or no wind and that allows the cooler, heavier air, more dense air to settle down here to the surface. We're going to warm up fairly quickly throughout the day. Upper 40s by mid morning, 55 by noon, and the clouds are going to continue to sort of thicken up as we go into the late afternoon hours. It's going to make it up to 61 later on this afternoon for a high temperature and then have mostly cloudy skies around here tonight. So it won't cool off as much. Still going to be a cool start or a cool night and a cool start tomorrow morning. And we'll have obviously lots of clouds overnight, which computer model is handling very well. And with the clouds comes the moisture. Wind's going to be shifting around to the southeast. And so by commute time, heading off to work, heading off to school tomorrow morning, you are going to have a few scattered light showers around the area, and that's going to continue to be the case throughout most all of the morning, just uh, sort of few and far between. There may actually be a couple of thunderstorms, especially further off down to the southeast, and this will be the situation through lunchtime. And then we're going to start to clear on out from west to east later on in the day, and that's as yet another Cool front moves on through here, sort of another reinforcing shot of cooler air. So we'll make it up to 60, then just stay in the 50s going into the middle part of the week. The normal high right now is 72, 10, 15 degrees below normal on the high end of the scale. Low end of the scale, normal low is 51 degrees, so we are going to be anywhere from 5, 10, close to 15 degrees below normal as well for the low end of things. And this latest chunk, this was Arctic air that came in behind that front that moved through on Friday. Unlike recent fronts that have been more Pacific in nature, where it just pretty much gets rid of the, the humidity and then that allows temperatures to cool down. This was just this cold Arctic air mass, 16 Casper, tw uh, 10, pardon me, at Bismarck. A couple of days ago, it was actually down to zero and below zero up there in Cutbank, Montana. So the cold air is definitely here and for us it is going to be sticking around as you saw for good chunk of the weekend going into the weekend 55 degrees at noon sunny skies couple of high clouds out there and then clouds will continue to thicken up as we go into later afternoon 61 for high temperature 10 below normal then tomorrow we start off with some showers around the area and not going to be a washout, but just enough to make the roads slippery in the morning. We'll clear out later on in the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine. That next front moves through, so that just any sort of attempt at warming, it's going to trim that off. So we stay on the cool side midweek. Another small chance of rain on Thursday, and yet another chance at a couple of showers maybe by Saturday with yet another front. So it's definitely a fall pattern every two, three, four days. Another front comes through here. These aren't as powerful as the one that moved through Friday, but then again, we were very warm and humid out ahead of that front. So it looks like Sunday is uh, today. It's probably the best day to put up decorations if you want to get up, start early for Christmas decorations. Probably so. Now, tomorrow in the afternoon, Tuesday is going to be nice as well, but it'll be just a, just a hair not as cold okay. today. So. All right, decorations. It's probably what I'm going to be doing later today. Me too. Be. I'll be Sipping on some coffee, sitting outside, enjoying this cool, crisp weather. <laughs> you want to come to my house and get up on the ladder? <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, give you, I'll help you. <laughs> well, Thank folks, you. I'm super excited about this. The Fort Aww. Worth Zoo in Texas has something to celebrate. A bouncing baby gorilla. So take a look at the new arrival named Bruno. Oh, so cute. The zoo in a Facebook post says the gorilla was born on November 6th to its parents, Gracie and Elmo. He came in at around four to five pounds. That's normal for newborn gorillas. The infant is only the second ever Western Lowland gorilla born at the Fort Worth Zoo. Oh, well, Bruno. Welcome. welcome to Fort Worth. <laughs> welcome to this world, Bruno. He just looks so cute. Beautiful. All right, it's 817 and 41 degrees. And next, we have a look at some of last night's big game coverage and the latest scores. 
First, let's look at these lotter numbers. Pick three, seven, eight, nine, Fireball six, Daily four, eight, zero, four, eight, Fireball eight. All right, get those tickets out. The lucky numbers for cash, five, one, 11, 27, 32, and 35. Texas Lottery, those numbers are 1, 19, 24, 38, 39, and 48. And Powerball, 16, 20, 44, 57, 58, Powerball 6, Power Play 4, good luck. Welcome back and now to some sports. The bi-district round of the UIL football playoffs wrapped up yesterday at Ferris Stadium. Harlan taking on Del Rio in Class 6A. Late first quarter, Hawks get on board first. Quarterback Noah Ferris goes deep for Mickey Dessing, who hauls it in for the 27-yard touchdown. A great pass right there. You can see it on your screen. It's 7-0 Harlan. Second quarter, offense stays hot. This time, Jacob Gonzalez takes the handoff, finds some running room, and powers in for the 14-yard score. That makes it 14-0 Harlan. And the Hawks just pour it on from there as we head to the big game coverage scoreboard. Now the Hawks win it 42 to three and in the first round of the Taps playoffs, Central Catholic falls to Dallas Bishop Lynch 41 to 21. Now births at state are on the line yesterday in high school volleyball. And there was a great crowd in hand at Littleton Gym. La Vernia taking on Belleville in the class 4A regional final. Bears pulling away in the first set. Mackenzie Blount delivers with a cross court kill. Bears take the first 25 to 21. This one goes the distance. A full five set match. Bears hanging tough late. Bailey Shelbybine with some perfect placement on this roll shot makes it 14 to 11 game in the fifth. But they can't quite clutch out the win. Sydney McKay seals an epic match with this kill. The Bears come up just short of the state tournament. Three sets to two is the final. Now in Class 2A, Johnson City falls to Schellenberg in straight sets. And in Class 1A, DeHannis returns to the state tournament for the fourth time in the last six years by sweeping Neshes in the Class 1A regional final. The Cowgirls will be the only representative from our region at state. Go Cowgirls! That's right, go Cowgirls! <laughs> All right, 823, 42 degrees. A new project at Disneyland aiming at helping those with disabilities feel included. What they added to the new ride coming up. Good morning, San Antonio. I'm Jonathan Cotto. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, November 13th. Love to have you on with us this morning, Jonathan. I am Jonathan. happy to be here. I am so happy to be here, and I'm joined by you. It's always so much fun being here in the morning, and, and with Mike as well. We try to have fun. Uh, Jonathan looking really handsome in his beard, and so is Mike for No Shave November. You are very kind. And <laughs> as last, last check, we are in first place, thanks to y'all for uh, donating. First place in the country, our oh. team is. Team KSAT, of course, we finished second place last year, so keep those donations coming. Last check, I think we've got more than $6,000 out there, so... Thank you very much. All right, take a look outside right now, and you can see a couple of high clouds are out there. 41 degrees out at the airport. The normal low is in the low 50s, so we're just a little bit more than 10 degrees below normal. We did bottom out uh, at 38 at the airport this morning. 25 is the dew point. Very dry air, and we didn't have any clouds overnight, so we had no blanket on top of us. Dry air, light wind, perfect situation for allowing these temperatures to really get down there. It has warmed up above freezing finally at Kerrville Comfort both at 33 35 at Bulverde and at least on this map no more freezing temperatures but a lot of folks in the hill country did get below freezing and uh, wind chill temperatures in some spots there's a bit of a breeze New Braunfels San Antonio and uh, Rio Medina so a slight bit of a wind chill now even though temperatures are above that freeze warning had been in effect now where there's been widespread freezings we won't see any more freeze warnings issued throughout the rest of this season that's just to kind of uh, warn about the first freeze. So cold and beautiful this morning. A couple of those high clouds. Clouds going to be increasing throughout the day. We're going to hit a high temperature today of 61 degrees. And then tomorrow, we're going to have somewhat of a wet start. Clouds going to continue to thicken up. Moisture comes back in here. We'll have a few showers around the area. Maybe a few thunderstorms, especially down to the southeast. Once again, 60 for a high temperature. And we'll see sunshine in the afternoon. That's associated with yet another front, which is going to keep temperatures on the definitely the chilly or, if you will, cold side throughout the rest of the week. We're going to be well below normal on both ends of the scale 
all week long. Another rain chance way down the road. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Jonathan. Thank you, Mike. A family is safe on the north side after a house fire. Firefighters say it happened on Cadbury Drive just before 3 o'clock this morning. The fire quickly spread, but first responders were able to knock it out. The home suffered heavy damage, but the cause has not been determined. This morning, San Antonio police say a husband and wife were involved in a deadly shooting overnight on the city's west side. It happened on 200 block of Randall Avenue around 2 20 early this morning. LCPD says two men got out of a car and shot at a husband and wife who were arriving at their grandparents' home. The husband was hit multiple times and died at the scene. The wife was also shot multiple times and taken to University Hospital in serious condition. So far, police haven't said anything about the suspects. For the first time since its discovery, a family is opening up about human remains found near a flea market where their loved one was last seen six years ago. Maria Jesus Yamas disappeared on November 20th in 2016 at a flea market off of State Highway 16. But last year in September, a group of dove hunters found a skull near where Maria was last seen, about 3,200 feet away from the flea market a place Maria's son, Refugio, says they're familiar with. We were up and down that area so much, and for a skull to be found, it's hard to believe we couldn't miss something like that. We want to mention that today there will be a memorial for beloved San Antonio radio host Russell Rush. Yeah, Russell Rush, he was a radio host for 96.1 now and a longtime friend of KSAT 12. He passed away last month after battling a long battle with T-cell lymphoma. The memorial will be at Techport Arena. Doors will open at 2 p.m. The memorial will begin at 3 p.m. His family has also set up a memorial website for him where fans can share their favorite memory of Russell. You can find that link on KSAT.com. Now, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department is offering free entry to all Texas state parks today in honor of veterans and active military. Now, the daily entrance fees will be waived for all day use. Reservations are highly recommended since some parks are expected to reach their capacity limit. Additionally, those who purchase hunting and fishing licenses can help support the Veterans Commission's Veterans Assistance Fund by adding donations. And visit that website for more information, ksat.com. Attention all San Antonio Public Library hold card holders. You can now stream videos on Canopy. That's a streaming platform designed for to support literacy and critical thinking for all ages. That's according to the news release from the library. To start using Canopy, all users need to do is enter their library card number on the program website or app. Access to Canopy Kids also included in the library's subscription. And tomorrow is World Diabetes Day, and experts say prevention is the best treatment. It really is, and that's why later this morning, University Health and the San Antonio Food Bank, they are teaming up to host a free health fair. So free glucose screenings will be offered, as well as fresh produce. It's also a chance to learn more about the disease. Remember, it's not just type 2 diabetes. There's also type 1 diabetes. They're very different. It's happening from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. this morning at the Texas Diabetes Institute. That's on South Zamora. We have all that information posted for you over on our website, ksat.com. The power situation in Washington next year becoming clearer overnight as the Senate race in Nevada is projected to go to incumbent Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto facing a challenge by Republican Adam Luxalt, who was endorsed by former President Trump. And Mary Alice Parks breaks down what this means for both parties in the near future. This morning, Democrats coming up aces in Nevada, now projected to win the Senate seat there and with it, control of the Senate. Tonight, with the victories in Arizona and Nevada, Democrats will remain the majority party in the Senate and I will remain majority leader. This is a great night. It's a great night for Democrats. It's a great night for our candidates who won and it's a great night for America. President Biden overseas celebrating the win. I'm incredibly pleased by the turnout. And I think it's a reflection of uh, the quality of our candidates. 
Democratic Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, the first Latina elected to the U.S. Senate, edging out her Republican challenger, Adam Laxalt, and headed back to Washington now for a second term. The largest county in the state reporting results from additional mailed-in ballots overnight, giving the senator a lead of over 6,000 votes. Laxalt not yet commenting, but reminding voters on Twitter they have until Monday to check and make sure their ballots were verified and counted. With their majority in the Senate secured, thanks to Vice President Kamala Harris as a potential tie-breaking vote, the eyes appear to have it. The Democratic victory in Nevada takes the pressure off of Georgia, where Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican Herschel Walker are headed for a runoff. But both parties still have their feet on the gas in the Peach State, now hoping to pick up one more seat. Turn up the vote. <laughs> Republican Senator Rick Scott campaigning with Walker tomorrow and Governor Brian Kemp, who just won his own reelection, doubling down to try to get Walker over the finish line. Back out west, Democratic Senator Mark Kelly giving a victory speech after his race was projected by ABC News this weekend. I also want to thank our state's election officials, honorable Republicans and Democrats who are doing the important work of making sure that Arizonans' votes and voices are heard. His opponent, Blake Masters, backed by former President Trump, not yet conceding, as the state is still tabulating the final votes, but writing on Twitter, if at the end Senator Kelly has more of them than I do, then I will congratulate him on a hard-fought victory. That's Mary Alice Parker reporting. The Biden administration is no longer accepting applications for student loan forgiveness. This comes after a second federal court shut down the program. Now, White House officials say about 26 million had already applied and 16 million applications have been approved. Now, this week, a Texas judge ruled President Joe Biden overstepped in his authority in creating the program without congressional approval. A federal court is considering whether to impose a permanent ban. 800 people aboard a cruise ship in Australia have tested positive for COVID-19. The cruise line says that includes the passengers and crew aboard the Majestic Princess. They say all positive cases were mild symptoms or asymptomatic and the guests were isolated in their in their rooms. Those infected were eventually escorted off the ship from a separate exit. If you drive a Tesla, you may want to pay attention to this. Tesla has announced a voluntary recall of more than 40,000 vehicles that could have power steering issues. The recall involves Model S and Model X vehicles between uh, 2017 and 2021. Now, some motorists have reported their electric cars losing power steering on bumpy roads or after hitting a pothole. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration reports that the defect does not affect steering control itself. Instead, it means the driver has to use more strength to turn the wheel, especially at lower speeds. All right, a lot of our men here at KSAT, they are getting hairier for a good cause because <laughs> it's right. No Shave November. And I want to show the viewers, this is I've been talking about the smolder. All of the guys have been posting their <laughs> selfies. But Jonathan Cotto can teach a master class on the smolder because there it is. Oh, there it is. There, look at the hearts. <laughs> the hearts. Okay. Thank you, MJ, our All editor. Right, MJ, I see you. I see you. <laughs> so handsome. Okay, this if if this picture here, just the lighting, the look, Jonathan, this is everyone needs to donate now. <laughs> donate now. The <laughs> link is... Uh, at my Facebook, it's posted on my Facebook. You can go there, Jonathan Cotto. It's for a good cause, folks. And the picture, it's all just angles and good. I'm like, oh, I'm take my gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike is is Val You're the Baron. smolder on the ash. So yeah, you, you do have that. Team ash. smolder is Jonathan <laughs> Cotto. Look how handsome he is. Too kind, sir. Oh too kind. my gosh. Okay, so you're in what place right now? I think I'm in fifth place. Yeah. Okay. At 375. Uh, towards my $500 goal. I know you're, you've been kind of poking at Max Massey that you're ahead of him. Hey, <laughs> but Team Jonathan Cotto and of course Max Massey because Mike already has, he's in the lead. Look at that, 1,700 oh, Mark Austin job, right Mike. behind him. Uh, I love seeing this because we're number one in the country right now. Um, and we're goal is to get over $20,000. But take out your phones and just scan this QR code on your screen. You can choose who you want to donate to, but after that smolder and that 
picture we showed of Jonathan. I mean, you have to donate in honor. Sarah, Jonathan. we'll have to see. We'll have to revisit that leaderboard and see how effective that picture was. But I think it was pretty effective, Jonathan. Eagles in good lighting, folks. That's all it is, truly. Lighting. The master of selfies here. Yeah, we yeah, try. You are we the try. king. <laughs> all right, it's 840 and 43 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, Lightscape is here, folks. Why visitors can expect a lot of new attractions, along with some old favorites this year. And a new project at Disneyland is aiming at helping those with dis disabilities feel included. So what they added to a new ride, that's coming up. And taking a look outside through live cam of San Antonio, you are just looking beautiful this morning, 43 degrees. We'll be checking in with Mike to see how the weekend and the week ahead is going to play out. With the midterm election still not decided, who will control the House and the Senate? Sunday, exclusive Nancy Pelosi, one-on-one -on -one with George. What does this election mean for Biden, Trump, and the country? Plus, the Powerhouse Roundtable takes it all on Sunday on ABC's This Week. Well, it's a first in 60, in a 67 year history of Disneyland, characters in wheelchairs are now represented in one of the attractions. The California theme park on Friday unveiled two dolls in wheelchairs on its small world ride. It's a small world ride. The project took more than half a year and what the resort says <coughs> is its aim to look with a magnifying glass for opportunities for inclusion. In a statement, the president of the nonprofit Disability Inn says the new dolls are a fantastic addition. Guests of the attraction ride ride a boat through scenes representing multiple countries with audio animatronic figures that represent children. All right, it's 43 degrees at 845, Mike, and man, it's like... I can't believe how long. This is like not one of those like quick snaps like we're used to here in San Antonio, like one day being 40, the next day being 80, you know, back and forth. Like last weekend, mm -hmm. Saturday was just fantastic. And then all of a sudden the humidity just came back in here really quickly. Brutal. It was humid, you know, warm all week long. And then that big front moved through on Friday. And this was an Arctic front, unlike a lot of times uh, the recent ones have been Pacific fronts, where it's just this drier air kind of coming on in here. This is the one, this air was born up there in, in Canada and up in the Arctic. And so... And it's going to be around for yeah, like a week. We get little reinforcing shots of this coming in here uh, every once in a while. And look <laughs> at this guy. He loves being outside. The dog uh, <laughs> yesterday, and he's just like, just those smells in the air. Yes, he absolutely. See the smile on his face? So scan Price. that QR code, and uh, and you can send in some of your KSAC Connect pictures. So we do have a few high clouds out here. You can see a little bit of this high-level moisture, kind of that milky shade to the sky. But otherwise, I mean, it's kind of split in hairs. It's absolutely beautiful. And this is 410 I-10 all the way. And a little downtown skyline looks kind of small from this vantage point, obviously, off in the distance there. So 33 in comfort, just above freezing. Now, everybody has now moved above freezing, and we had a lot of freezing readings, even in northwestern portions of Bear County and out in most all of the, uh, the hill country. And now with this dry air, it's going to warm up relatively quickly. We do have a slight bit of a wind chill to deal with in a couple of spots. Feels like 38 out there at the airport, 36 at Rio Medina. And actually, the wind chill in uh, Hondo earlier this morning was down around the, the mid-20s, so not a a lot of wind and that's what a lot of temperatures to get so cool but just enough out there to add that little bit of a zing to some of these cool readings so we're going to make it up into the low 50s by 11 o'clock by the way that is just getting back up to a normal low temperature at 11 o'clock at 52 degrees so we're starting off or had started off 10 to 15 degrees below normal in most areas. And then we make it up to 61 later on today and the clouds will continue to thicken up as we go into tonight and by mid evening we're going to have mostly cloudy skies and then just basically cloudy skies overnight, and then we'll have a couple of showers moving on in. So this is what the computer model shows as the clouds continue to thicken up around here and overnight into tomorrow morning. And then we start to see just a couple of these light little sprinkly showers around, just enough to make the uh, the morning commute kind of, a, kind of a nuisance. So the roads are gonna be damp tomorrow. Allow yourself a little extra time, and then that'll be sticking around through the latter portion of the morning. They actually have a couple of thunderstorms, some stronger storms further off to the east by 
early afternoon. Then things will start to clear out from west to east as the next front moves on in here, which is going to be a reinforcing kind of oomph or push of this colder air. Also, you can see what's going on as far as the dew point. So we're very, very dry right now. Humidity comes back up. That's what's going to help out with some of the light sprinkles, showers, maybe some fog tomorrow morning. Then the front comes on through here, gets rid of the humidity. Then it starts to creep back up on Friday and then another front's going to be moving on through here. We were talking about Arctic air. Yeah, this is the real McCoy 17 Omaha 10 Bismarck 16 and Casper one point even last week as this air mass started moving in. It was below zero in Cutbank, Montana. So all this came down from Canada as opposed to just the Pacific fronts, which bring in that drier air from the West. So here's what's going on with the upper level steering winds. There was the first low that moved through, brought the front through on Friday. This next one comes in our direction. This is gonna help to increase the humidity and then give us a chance for some rain early tomorrow morning. Then we get the next kind of reinforcing shot of cooler air coming on in here for the middle portion of the week. And by the latter part of the week, the next low is gonna try and dig down in our direction. This will give us another chance for a couple of light showers, not any, Unfortunately, the air is so dry, not any big rain chances around here, just uh, kind of some of those nuisance showers. And this will then pull down another nice chunk of some cold air. Keep this cold air kind of in place as we go even into the start of next week of Thanksgiving week. 55 degrees and uh, got a lot of sunshine on there, kind of that milky shade to the sky at noon. And then we'll have more clouds thickening up 61 for a high temperature later on today. Then tonight clouds will thicken up and we get a lot more moisture coming back on in here. Then we have a chance for a couple of showers around tomorrow morning. So like I said, allow yourself a little extra time. You'll definitely need a jacket. 45 starting off tomorrow, getting up to 60, but we'll have more sunshine in the afternoon. Beautiful day on Tuesday, but definitely cool. And look at those low temperatures staying right around 40, give or take. And high temperatures are going to be only in the 50s throughout a good chunk of next week. Wow. Normal high 72. Love it. Yeah. I've already taken all my winter clothes out. I have my scarves out, my coats, jackets. Have you I'm put ready. up the tree? No tree. That, that's, you're like a hard I'll probably Thanksgiving wait till like, person. I love Thanksgiving, but I probably won't put up a tree until like mid-December. Wow. I like oh, a wow. real tree. I like a real yeah. tree, just the smell of it. But That mid-December though? Yeah. That way it can go that through January. That is so late, Jonathan. <laughs> I'm not shaming you. You do you. I'll do, yeah, mid-December. That way um, the tree lasts longer. There's nothing like a real tree. I, I love a real tree. I completely agree with you, but unfortunately they, even if you keep, you know, they're eventually going to get dried out and stuff, and it yeah. becomes just a mess when those needles all fall. My husband the vetoed <laughs> the real trees. He was like, nope, we're getting a, a fake one. Unfortunately, the convenience factor has overtaken them. Right, trees. right. Some of those fake ones look really real, so. Mm. It's not the real one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Speaking of the holidays, holiday lights are starting to go up around the city. So here's a first look at the Botanical Gardens for Lightscape. The Winter Light Spectacular is now open to guests. If you went last year, some favorites will be back like the Winter Cathedral. But some of the new features include a flower forest and visitors can expect a lot of new attractions. If, your fav if you were here last year, your favorites are back. The fire garden reimagined over the lake, the blue bonnets are twice in size, and we also have 80% of the show is brand new. Lightscape goes until January 8th. That's the blue bonnets right there. That was probably my favorite thing. Okay. Was that, that field of blue bonnets. I did yeah. not go last year, so I feel like I, I need to go. Same. I, f I feel like I have to check it out this year. I also sure. saw that there was like 11 proposals last year really? at this event. Um, so hopefully more proposals happen. <laughs> my <laughs> advice would be go in an off day. <laughs> Don't try and go around Thanksgiving. Because you said it was like there shoulder was a, to shoulder. Yeah, a ton of people there around Thanksgiving. So. Well, there you go, folks. You have a chance to go there uh, up until January 8th. The time is 8.51 to 44 degrees. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA for World Diabetes Day, we speak to local experts about the disease and way to man ways to manage. It's pretty chilly out there. Just stay in bed and throw the blankets back over your heads. Best advice there. 44 degrees right now in town. We've warmed up from uh, our low this morning of 38, uh, mid 30s in portions of the hill country. Clouds are going to be thickening up throughout the day. 
and we'll have a high temperature of 61 just like yesterday, well below normal by 10 degrees. And then we've got the chance of rain tomorrow morning. So allow yourself some extra time and stays pretty chilly all week long. Love to see it yep. today and Tuesday. Best days to put up your Christmas decorations. That's right. I'm going in about 10 minutes. All right. <laughs> hey, thank you, gentlemen, for oh, joining me this Sunday. Pleasure. Good to see you as always. Anytime. <laughs>